morning everyone. My name is Sonia Besford. I was born in Belgrade, Serbia, but I've lived in London longer than I haven't. Today I'm going to read you one of my poems called Sars Call to Jazz. No haircut, no leg waxing, no pedicure. I've never had much time for manicures. John says he loves my all natural state. And who am I to argue with his aesthetic sense? So every morning I shower, spray an aerosol of John Louis Charest or the toilette on the pulse points, behind the earlobes, on the inner elbows and wrists not forgetting the backs of the knees. Then get dressed as if going to a private viewing, limited to the most observant, artists and poets, to see the first London exhibition of Rembrandt Bugatti's sculptures, because I have just finished Francesini's novel. I fastened the pearl necklace and thus assembled I descend to my study, hidden from the outside by the katsura tree, protected by the books inside. To work on a new novel with eccentric characters who may write Bogatis, Canos, Flamingos, Giraffes, Polar Bears, across deserts, wetlands and grasslands, savannas and tundras. Perhaps I will let them all survive, whole but changed. Perhaps we shall all survive, whole but changed. Then, tonight, with our street neighbors, we shall all applaud. John shall ring the handbell, and I shall bang with a wooden spoon on his granny's metal colander to celebrate to bow, to be grateful to all our NHS heroes. I am humbled. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Anastasia Kojokaru. I'm Romanian, but I live in Brussels, Belgium. Um, we're still confined here at the moment, but um, it's easing right now in stages. So a lot of things are a bit different, but it still feels the same. Um, I haven't written a lot during the confinement, but um, I still wrote um, things in my dream journal, I wrote down my dreams, and I usually write my dreams in Romanian. So I'll read uh, one of you to you in Romanian and then I'll translate it to English. Mă întorsesem în România ca să merg din nou la liceu. Eram în liceu și îmi pregăteam orarul și caietele pentru noile materii. Nu înțelegeam complet de ce eram din nou în liceu, chiar dacă făcusem deja studii de licență și master. Mă întâlnisem cu Diana, fosta mea colegă de bancă, și arăta super diferit, numai că vocea îi rămăsese la fel. Am întrebat-o dacă vrea să fie din nou colega mea de bancă. Până la urmă a acceptat, deși mi-a zis că alții nu au vrut să o aibă ca și colegă de bancă pentru că ea și viitorul coleg sau colegă ar copia unul de la altul. La un moment dat m-am întâlnit cu fosta profă de engleză, care arăta super stilată. <laughs> Mi-a zis că se aștepta să fiu în Anglia și că era surprinsă că m-am întors în România. Dacă probabil așa trebuia să fie lucrurile dacă acum eram în România. So, now I'll uh, translate this to English. Um, it's a dream about being back in high school um, and I get this dream quite a lot lately even though high school was quite a long time ago 
eight years ago now. So yeah, I was back in Romania to <clears throat> for the purpose of going back to high school. Um, so I was in the building, I was getting ready my schedule in my notebooks for my new classes. I wasn't understanding completely why I was in high school again, even though um, I had already finished my um, undergraduate and graduate studies. I met up with my past um, desk buddy um, and she looked very different, but her voice was still the same. I asked her if she wanted to be my desk buddy again. Uh, in the end, she said yes, but she told me that others didn't want to have her as their desk buddy because um, her and her future desk buddy would cheat and would um, copy each other's writing and tests. <laughs> um, at some point, I met up with my um, a past English teacher and she looked very stylish. She told me that she was expecting me to be in England and she was surprised that I was back in Romania. Even and this was probably how things should have been if I was back in Romania. That's what she said. Yeah, this is this is about it. Um, thank you very much and I'm really happy to be part of this project and I hope you enjoyed hearing this. Bye! Hello, my name is Doina Gerca and I'm a poetess from Republic of Moldova. Here is my first book named Tushti. Uh, what in English means you know. And I want to recite for you one of my favorite poems from, from my book. It's in Romanian, but uh, with English subtitles. Veshnicia. Eu aș alege veshnicia cu un singur om. I-aș face doi copii, am sădi un pom, i-aș găti dimineața clătite cu gem. L-aș lăsa să mă asculte cum plâng sau cum gem, cum ochii mi se închid pe jumătate când râd. L-aș lăsa să mă asculte în baie cum cânt, i-aș scrie poeme și i-aș recita versuri de dor, de nu mă uita. L-aș ține de mână atunci când e greu. I-aș da bucăți din mine, din sufletul meu. Aș merge cu el până la capăt de lume. Și câte aș mai face? Și câte i-aș mai spune? Thank you for your attention. You can really only divorce in your home country, my father tells me. He's in his usual seat, an armchair in the study, behind the door, which is where he likes to take calls and read. He sits there so often that Nina has draped a cloth on the back of the armchair where his head usually rests, to preserve the upholstery from his dandruff, my father once explained, a little embarrassed. Haza, home. This is what the Hungarians use for the physical space you live in, no matter how temporarily. It can be a house or an apartment, a short-term rental, a hotel room. As in, menjünk koza, let's go home. Or, mikor érünk már haza, when are we getting home? It's also the word Hungarians use to mean Hungary itself, whenever they are not in Hungary. A nyáron hazamentünk means, we went back to Hungary this summer. Or, Tuttuk, hogy nem tudunk hazamenni. We knew we couldn't go back to Hungary. In this use, haza expands to embrace an entire country, even if that country is not where your other haza, that physical, intimate space where you brush your teeth or clip your toes, is located. From what I can tell, home in English takes on this double meaning when you pair it with back, as in back home, we don't put mustard in the salad dressing. 
The double use of the term haza has long confused me, because my parents continue to use it to mean Hungary long after they gave up any intention of making Hungary their home again. A typical scene in our kitchen growing up, for instance, would be several of my mother's Hungarian friends sitting around the table discussing how they hadn't been home in a while because their children's school holidays didn't match up with their work schedule, or how to avoid Switzerland altogether when driving home, or how people at home were quick to assume they were rich and had a huge house, how everyone with any ambition was also trying to leave, and they didn't have any sympathy for you when you came home and complained. Haza is also the word my father uses when he says that thing about divorce. I ask him whether he thinks he and my mother might have separated earlier had they not left Hungary. Oh yes, he says, there was clearly no leaving each other out there. Like many other Hungarians, he refers to America and anywhere else that is not Hungary as kint, out there. As in, where did you leave the wine? Oh, out there on the balcony. But also, where did you work in the 1990s? Out there, in the West. Like Hoza, this is a habit that has stuck, even though he's been living in the world of out there for most of his life now. It may seem like an innocuous leftover from his mother tongue, but I wonder what that feels like to live in a permanent out there. Is it the same feeling I have of being on the periphery? The difference between my father and me is this. He still posits an in there, a center, even if it's only a theoretical one. For my part, I know there is no center, because there has never been one. If my tribe is the motley crew of in-betweeners with malleable accents and slippery mother tongues, then there can be no inside, only an outside. For Iris, I'm actually Slovenian. I was born in uh, Maribor. Um, I live in Paris right now in France. Uh, so, and uh, I guess this task is about uh, showing you my artwork. So, uh, let's begin. <laughs> I do illustrations. So, it's uh, like they're kind of fairies that you can see. Oh. <laughs> um, I do them. I have started doing it like quite some time ago like 10 years ago and uh, I've been enjoying it it's actually I've been only using like uh, watercolor and uh, oh you can see it <laughs> watercolor and um, I tried some acrylic painting as well so but in general I use a pencil to create them in the beginning and then uh, when there is a beautiful sunlight I start uh, I start painting them sometimes or like in the afternoons I enjoy it as well so it's uh, like oh well, yeah it's mostly women <laughs> uh, but I've done some also with the uh, character of male and I've started l recently also children because uh, yeah I've been inspired actually by real life um, I also tried the well here you have like this was done actually for a collection of wine so it was a wine label I have done some for like uh, for books or uh, for notebooks uh, so I have done different projects already with it I also sometimes do like a little bit different things uh, which are like houses that I tried it's something really new that I tried like some different elements elements and like they're like uh, they're horses I mean the horses. I think it's a water animal. I forgot the name. Sorry about it. And um, well, I've been trying to also, for example, try to do those, which is like a unicorn. And besides, you can see my handwriting because sometimes I like to write like a stories about it or around it. So yeah, that's my try of it. <laughs> so that's it, like a little bit to give you the feeling of it. And on the other hand, I also do. Um, I do photography. I do um, recently. I've been doing a lot of commercial photography, like food photography and um, portraits. Um, so, but like um, beside that, I also enjoy uh, photographing, like something very dreamy, and like something that's uh, not quite. Uh, 
quite uh, tangible. I mean, uh, you cannot really hold it sometimes or you say this is exactly that it. And I've been using a lot like analog film. So um, I kind of prefer it because I feel like you have more magic with it and you don't know what's going to happen. And it's like it's a bigger surprise anyway. So uh, just to give you the idea of it. Um, so but I also use like digital, for example. So. I think in both mediums you can find a different ways of uh, of using it and like doing different things with it. Um, it depends what you want actually, <laughs> that's what I think. So this was just a bit, a little bit about, ah, and I found a really old one which is like the dreaming houses because you can't read it. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Uh, you can find my work on Formi Iris dot com and uh, also on the instagram I'm after under uh, for me iris so yeah uh, that's it <laughs> bye